We see their pictures on our Instagram feeds, Twitter homepages, and they're probably some of the most clickable videos on YouTube. The exotic pets of social media. Posed elegantly, behaving perfectly, accumulating thousands, if not millions of followers. The problem with these alluring posts is that it leaves thousands of people thinking, wait, why can't I have one? And this is what grows the multi-billion dollar exotic pet trade. And while these tigers, monkeys, and bears look happy for that split second on camera, the rest of their lives can be sheer hell. And not just for the animals. In many cases, owning an exotic pet can be just plain dangerous. He's killing my friend! Who's killing your friend? He killed my chimpanzee! In the U.S., you can legally own a primate in 30 out of 50 states with the right permit. But that doesn't make caring for one any easier, which is why people often give up their exotic pets once they learn that they don't know how to take care of them. When somebody decides that they don't want their $8,000 monkey anymore, there aren't many options as far as how to get rid of them. And this is where animal sanctuaries come in. We went to one just outside of Los Angeles, California called Animal Tracks, where a woman named Stacy Gunderson and her family live on a ranch and take care of a huge variety of these animals. My name is Stacy Gunderson. I'm the director here at Animal Tracks, and um, I do a little bit of everything. We're big on animal education. These are animals that needed a little extra help. They were either pet trade, injured, needed some place to go, and we're that place. And so we share them with the general public. It's a six-banded armadillo. Oh, my lord. And I don't know if you guys know this, but armadillos don't have any popularity clubs. They're not <laughs> super popular. <laughs> People uh, like to hunt them. They're easy to hunt. They're kind of slow. They sound like an elephant running through the cornfield. So uh, we're crazy about armadillos here, and this guy is actually a cornerstone species. So Patagonia is a good place to find Frank. Okay. And he is an architect. He's a great digger. Yeah. He digs these fantastic tunnels that go down about eight feet and they pop up at the end so that you don't have to worry about flooding. Jesus. And the other animals appreciate his work so much they steal his burrows. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. So you can feel it's pliable, it's bendable. Yeah. It's his claws that are so powerful. If Elton, if you picked him up and his back feet and his front feet did this with your finger in the way, you yeah. snap your finger. It's it's mm -hmm. weird. There's a temperature to it. You would feel like it would be hard, like a, like a tortoise, right? But it's actually yeah. not. It's very warm. Well, the government. And it has hair in it. Uh, we get the animals from a variety of different places. Some of them are injured wildlife, like our native animals, like our raccoons and our possums and our foxes. Lots of them are pet trade, our marmosets, our lemur. Um, uh, some of them come because they're what we call surplus animals. So if a facility has too many foxes, can only keep one fox, then they have to find facilities that can take the other four that are registered with the state of California. So for people who don't know, what is the exotic pet trade? Um, it's a worldwide problem where people can, there's sometimes a black market. Um, there are states where it's legal to own a tiger or a lion in your backyard. Arizona is a state where you can currently have a monkey without a permit. Um, this is kind of crazy because most people don't even know how to take care of a hamster and now they've got a monkey in their house that literally bit their fingertip off or attacked the dog or attacked the mailman. So um, a lot of times it's impulse buy. People think, oh, it'd be so incredible to have a monkey as a pet. And you realize within 24 hours this was a really bad buy. We had someone recently buy marmosets in Vegas, brought them back, and a marmoset smells terrible. And the second their house smelled like a marmoset's ass, they no longer wanted these marmosets. And so we were given them. It's common with tarantulas, scorpions, snakes, ferrets, hedgehogs, marmosets. Um, most of these animals die within the first year. They have the biggest ears. It would be like us having elephant ears. Yes. Wow. Yes. To give you a better analogy of it, he can hear a watch ticking from 50 feet away. You can absolutely touch him and feel free to pet him. And What? Yeah, it's very cold at night in the desert, so that's why he's got this fur. It's almost like a chinchilla. Aww. Aww. <laughs> he came from Minnesota, so he had a mother who didn't know what he was and rejected him. So we have a farm in Minnesota, and we got word that this little fennec fox needed a home. So we got a little Sherpa bag like I was Paris Hilton and brought him home at six weeks old, and uh, now we're trying to find him a mate. So what? we've got our ears to the ground for any fennec fox that needs a home. What? It's not, haha, look what we have. It's come see why these animals need to be on this planet. And they shouldn't be in your living room. They should be in the jungle. That's where I would prefer them. 
But if they can't live there, they have to live somewhere, and this is where I'd like them to live. Um, a lot of times people get a pet, uh, like a pet monkey. Uh, we have one that lost an eye, and they didn't have money to do the surgery. So when we receive this monkey, she needs immediate medical attention. And this animal does not carry rabies, runs too cold for rabies, but gets blamed because of that little okay. bald tail. This is the trash collector of nature. Okay. And really good to have in your backyard. Dogs don't like them and cars don't like them and they're not the smartest creature on the face of the earth. Um, they started in Virginia and the Great Depression brought them all the way to California. Mm. Wow. Because people could catch them, put them in your car, babies would escape. We have, I believe, 83 different animals, and we have, I believe it is, um, 37 species. In North America, this is the only place that you can have this kind of free contact with the primates. And I want to be clear, it's not a free-for-all. The monkeys aren't free. They are on leash with a trainer, um, and the people are asked not to touch the monkeys. But the monkeys can literally climb on you, play with your shoelaces, your hair, your beard, your zippers. So yeah, we're the only place that offers that. So this is Chrissy, and Chrissy is a baboon, and she's a cross between two different kinds. She's going to hit on you. She's probably going to ask for your protection, because <laughs> she thinks like a female baboon, and it's a male-dominated society. Now, ladies, they're the ones that would have a harder time, and that's because you, she would be in competition for your attention. Mm. Now, what I want you to see is the reason this monkey is so self-assured is because of those muscles. Oh, they're massive. So this animal, if it wasn't for sanctuaries, would face euthanasia. Uh. So pet trade, their only choice is sanctuaries. When people smile at primates, teeth are weapons, and that's why monkeys throw poop at you at the zoo, because you you're smiling. So this is how we tell each other that we love each other. And you can see I'm being very gentle. She's not gentle with me. She pulls my hair up by the roots, which is why I'm, I'm going bald at this point. Uh -huh. Love hurts when you love a baboon. Do we force the animals to perform? Absolutely not. We do very little uh, filming of any kind because oftentimes that is something that is done through you have to stay here under the hot lights. Um, we do what comes natural. This monkey is just sitting here doing her thing. And uh, people love that. It's the greatest job because they don't have to do tricks. They just have to be monkeys. And what happened to Luke Skywalker? Luke is our little squirrel monkey here at Animal Tracks who is the King Kong of Animal Tracks. He's the only intact male, um, which means he has his boy parts. In the group he grew up in, he was in about 60 squirrel monkeys in a private ownership, and he was attacked by another monkey. They bit off all of his fingers in the fight. When monkeys fight, they are brutal with each other. And so once he got his stitches, he couldn't go back in with the primates as they would pull out the stitches. So he had to come someplace like Animal Tracks so that he could be kept safe. Any hybrid is a cross between two different kinds of animals. A wolf hybrid is part dog and part wolf. And lots of times it's very low content. A low content wolf would bark. So if someone says, this is my wolf, and it barks, it's probably a little bit. Um, it's probably more dog-like. But I will tell you what I like to tell people is I have two children. One would give you the shirt off his back and one would eat you in a plane crash. So when you breed a domestic with an exotic, just because it looks domestic, it can still think exotic. And for an adult, that's not too scary, but if you have small children in the home or small pets, an exotic animal goes for the throat. That's just natural. It's your natural response. So it jeopardizes the health of things in your home. So this is our newest member. He's pretty sure that was a bunny rabbit. But what we want people to know is this animal is not safe. This animal shouldn't be in your house, shouldn't see the pizza guy, the trash man, the, the mailman. This guy's a wolf. Yeah. So we treat him like a wolf. He goes on long walks. He's very powerful. He's a year old. He's 81 pounds and he still has a year of growing. And he wants to be a dire wolf. So just because he has moments of kindness yeah. doesn't mean he's a dog. These guys face euthanasia. Let's just say you have a wolf hybrid. You move, you can't keep it, it goes to the pound. They have no choice. They can't turn this animal over to somebody who has small children. The goal in the next step for Animal Tracks is to get a bigger place. So we recently have turned down a Celebes macaque, uh, a ferret, um, because we don't have any more room. We are maxed out. Um, people are starting to hear that we take in pet monkeys that are now a problem and they want to give them to us, but by law, we can only have so many monkeys in a certain size cage. So without a larger facility, we won't be able to take in more animals. Yeah, 
totally. She's actually very, very friendly. She likes armpit scratches, and when she's not eating, she likes chin scratches. She is licking you right now because that is a grooming thing for them. Uh, she would live in a female-dominated society, unlike the baboon or the capuchins that you guys met. Yeah. So because she would live in a female-dominated society, she's saying, I'll take care of you. This is cool. It's fine. Uh, you might notice her purring. She's in a really good mood today, so she was purring while we were waiting for you. She is paralyzed. Um, she's paralyzed from the waist down right now. Somebody had her as a pet. We think she was attacked, probably by another lemur. Could have been a different animal, but it was likely another lemur. People like to get them when they can in large quantities. Uh, the back right leg, the muscle was severed. Her left leg slowly atrophied because she learned it hurt less to just use her top half. The people never took her to the vet because that's a great way to get caught with animals you're not supposed to have. And they felt bad, so they did feed her pizza, which I don't know if you can find pizza trees in Madagascar, but if you can, sign me up. I want three, uh, three different kinds, preferably. So she was very malnourished when she came to us. We got her in July. We have been slowly rebuilding that muscle. You can actually feel some growth right here in the muscles. Wow. Um, but if you feel her hips, they're still very bony. Hey, Taylor, how much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. <laughs> She likes polar bear jokes. Can I bring her to my next stand-up show? <laughs> 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 You're going to take steps with that left leg. Yeah. So I know that there is muscle movement in there. I know there is feeling. Her tail will twitch sometimes. It is not prehensile. Okay. So it would not grab the way the capuchins would. Yeah. Uh, it's more hey, hey, Allison. Yeah. Can you come get Macy May? Miss Mace, come on. Thank you. I'd love to take groups to Costa Rica and do education, ecotourism. So if you go to Costa Rica and do anything that's eco-friendly, it buys jungle for these animals. It would be great to take a group to Costa Rica and actually buy a plot of land that would be just for primates. Ah. Wow. This is Monzo, and he is one of the oldest animals here at Animal Tracks. He's one of our originals, and he is an African serval, which is the mid-sized kitty cat of Africa. And he's got some special parts. He has eyes on the back of his head. That's so nothing can sneak up on him. He lives where there's lions, so it looks like he's looking at them. And he was brought on the pet trade, and somebody got caught with him, and that's how we got him. We're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. The world hasn't seen anything like this since the vanishing of the dinosaurs. We're losing anywhere from 150 to 200 species a day every 24 hours. We have seen a loss of 75% of the world's insects since the 1970s. People use insecticides and poisons, we have pollution, we have agriculture, we have people taking advantage of rhinos and uh, penguins. Um, we need to, to take our social media and we need to tell the average person that shark fin soup won't save you, it's not, it's not gonna save you from some disease. And by getting that education out there through social media, hopefully we can stop the majority of what's happening. Oh my goodness. They're covered in oil. Birds have an oil on their feathers. If you were to pet them, you take the oil off. Ah. So what you do is you go through the feathers and you touch in between. They do like affection. Wow. You just don't want to be pet like a dog. A little mouse. Oh wow, his beak is literally sideways. Yeah. Like yeah. It's actually the whole, so normally oh, you can take a resin. It feels very much like Like it's beak. literally like broken. Yeah, so wow. this little beak right there. Mm. And it goes all the way to the skin. So mm. normally a resin would be able to fill this in. There are ways to turn it around. I believe World Wildlife Conservation is talking about there's nine animals that are expected to do quite well this year and tigers are one of them. So that's because people have gone in and they've made tiger preserves and they're doing more ranger patrols and they're keeping um, poachers out and uh, things can turn around. That's my ear. That's the noise oh, they make. Oh, look at that. Ways that you can help Animal Tracks is um, go to our social media and get the word out for us. That's really expensive to do, so your likes and your shares are super helpful. Tag us when you can. Lots of people tell us we're a secret. We don't want to be a secret. We want everybody to know. We want you to physically come visit us and see what we do here. We want you to experience it. We want to touch your heart. But what we want you to know is that these animals don't belong in your homes. So this is not by any stretch of um, come see what it would be like to go buy a wolf hybrid. There, we're going to give you 50 reasons why you shouldn't buy a wolf hybrid, but they deserve to be on this planet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, if you guys want to support Animal Tracks Inc., all of their information is in the description below in this video. Right now, they are currently seeking out the funding they need to acquire a larger property that will help them 
support more and more animals so please if you guys have any ability to support them please do so or of course if you're in the area come check them out and of course the absolute best way to help that is at free of cost is simply by sharing this video the more people that know about what they're doing the more people will have the ability to help support them um, so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and yeah make sure to check out and support all these little fellas Hey guys, if you do not know, TFIL is now switching over to make more videos that are helping support various nonprofits, groups, and individuals around the world that are helping make a better positive difference. So we have, of course, launched a Patreon where you can find exclusive content just like this. And all of that in which the support you give us there allows us to come make more videos better quality. And of course, when we do come to places like this, we're able to financially support them as well. So make sure to check that out. <laughs> go, go check it out and help us support others that are also doing better for this world. Thanks, guys. <laughs>